Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rigging to the Com video, we're going to have another Ryzen update. So this is going to discuss the performance of Ryzen and also some findings of the community. Stay tuned to the end of the video, and I'll also give you a rundown of the BIOS that we're using for our particular board. And also a few photos and videos of the Ryzen build that I've been putting together. It's taken me pretty much all day because I've been doing other stuff as well, but tomorrow the benchmarks will definitely start. And a number of you have also proposed that I don't just use the GTX 1080. A number of you also want me to run a different scenarios using an RX 480, which definitely I can do. And you've also asked me to test out a few other scenarios down to 720p. So we will be doing that over the next couple of days, and I will be uh, trying different things out, as I promised you all. However, let's move away from that and actually focus on the news. So first things first, Lisa Sue has actually given some information regarding the performance of Ryzen. Oh, and thank you to the about 60 to 70 messages that I've had on Ryzen. Uh, so if you've happened to get a short reply from me, it's, I'm really sorry. It's just like 70 responses. It's a bit much, but um, I appreciate it. It's just because I'm alone this weekend, because as I said, Aim is with her family. It's just like, ah! But anywho, so there was an AMA, as it tends to be, on Reddit, and this one was conducted by Lisa Su, and she revealed that Ashes of the Singularity and also Total War Warhammer will be receiving patches to benefit with Ryzen's performance. By the way, there is a lot more stuff that we're going to be going into on Ryzen's performance in this video. She said, and I quote, Ryzen is doing really well in 1440p and 4K gaming when the applications are more graphics bound. She was honest about this, I have to say. And then she added, we do exceptionally well in rendering workstation applications where cores are more beneficial. Um, in 1080p, we have tested over 100 titles in the lab, and depending on testing conditions, we do better in some games and worse than others. We hear people wanting to see improved 1080p performance, and we can fully expect the rise in performance in 1080p will only get better as developers get more time with Zen. We have over 300 developers plus working with Zen, and several of the developers for Ashes of Singularity and Total Warhammer are actively optimizing now, end quote. Now... This comes alongside, so another individual who hasn't given me permission to share his name also sent me an article from a French magazine. He did Google Translate on my behalf, and he said that level 3 cache is obviously divided between two CCXs, so you have 8 megabytes each. We all knew that anyway, but it is very expensive in terms of latency for a thread running on CCX to then have data placed into the other CCX. In short, and so you're running um, on core one, so there's eight cores, so let's say you're on core one, which would technically be the second CPU, and that's in CCX um, one. So basically you're on the, let's call them, just for sanity's sake, let's just call that level three cache A and the second level three cache B. So let's say that you've got data in A, if you need to then suddenly have a different processor from the second CCX, so essentially you've got to transfer the data to B, it can be a problem. And with Windows OS is shuffling threads between cores, you can have issues with thread suspension. Now, he's also asked if I can do benchmarking on 1080p and 720p, and what we can do then is disable cores, and essentially just have them running on four um, CPU cores. And that's something I was going to do anyway, because it would give us a good indication of how performance is going to scale. Now, a very interesting post has popped up, actually, on um, Anantech. And this is from the Stilt, who is a member of on the forums. I'm going to try to remember to link this in the video description. And I'd encourage you to peruse the thread at your leisure. Um, I'm not going to go through all of it, because quite frankly, I, I just couldn't. It's just way too long for this particular video. But what it does do is he goes through quite a lot of his own findings regarding... Um, Ryzen. And he believes that, and I quote, I'm confident that most of the issues are just software issues, which occur, occur in each and every platform with plenty of potential delays, there's no denying that. Basically, the software and firmware stack were rewritten in a, less than four months, and his own opinion is AMD did well, regardless of minor issues. He believes, and to be honest with you, I would probably concur, 
the launch should have been delayed about one to two months. Um, now, the, me the reason behind all of this is there's no actual hardware issues in Zeppelin or Zen. In other words, the CPU isn't balked. There's not, you know, a wire crossed somewhere. It's just simply that it's just a bit too early. So there's problems. So it could be, for example, driver-related issues. It could be developers haven't had enough time to optimize it. It's the fact that the architecture is a little bit different. And there's no denying that the CPU is having issues. Um, and Windows 10 in particular seems to have some major problems with it. In fact, performance in some reports have said it's actually higher in Windows 7. And that's one of the reasons that you need to make sure you've got high performance mode on Windows uh, 10 with power settings, as we discussed yesterday. So what you have issues is that data is being shuffled across CCXs up to 50% of the time. And this means that you're going to have to constantly get new fetches from system memory, which is obviously not a good thing. Now, this is basically causing problems with games and CPU utilization. What does that mean? Well, the long and short of it is, and to be honest with you, I'm saying this without finalized conclusions, and I need to do a lot of testing myself. I'm simply reporting what I'm reading and what, you know, it seems to be going on. But if you look at a lot of the rise in results, even when you're not in a GPU bound scenario, so as you all know, typically with a computer based system, when you're playing a game, there's two scenarios A, your CPU bound. In other words, the data cannot physically be sent fast enough to the GPU. Or the reverse, the GPU is the limiting factor, so you can't get any more frame rates. So in short, if you were to put in, in a GPU-bound situation, a faster GPU, guess what? You get higher frame rates. If, on the other hand, you were to overclock the CPU in a CPU-bound situation, typically, of course, you'll get faster frame rates. The problem with Ryzen is it's not actually hitting 100% usage, and a lot of that seems to be the fact that you've got issues with, once again, um, SMT utilization. It's basically that threads are moving between cores too much, and it seems that every 10 seconds, a milliseconds or so, um, there is scheduling interruptions. But once again, a lot of this is very, very early. Now, I will say that this is one of the reasons that I initially told you all, if you have any doubts about Ryzen, not this specifically, because obviously I couldn't have forecast this a couple of weeks ago, but just like any platform, there are always problems on launch. I do believe most of this stuff will be ironed out in the next couple of weeks. I do believe that updates will happen, BIOS updates will happen, and so on and so forth. Let's switch to something a bit different. We're going to be taking a look at my own system configuration, because a number of you have messaged me asking me to go through the BIOS of Ryzen, and... Currently, my system is not finished being built. For example, as you can see, I've only got a standard hard drive in there at the moment. I haven't actually even installed my SSD. All voltages are set to auto. This is the default configuration, pretty much, of the BIOS. Now, as you can also tell, I am running an ASUS, or ASUS, depending how you wish to pronounce it, Prime X370 Pro motherboard with the BIOS revision point, or zero. Uh, 0.0502. There we go, I said it eventually, as well as the Ryzen 7 1700X. Now, there are a couple of little caveats. You might notice there the DDR4 memory is set to 2133 megahertz. We'll get to that. Um, I'm going to click on advanced mode, and I'm going to go through everything real quick. I'm not going to be kind of explaining anything as I'm going. I'm literally just going to be scrolling so you can see what the options are. I'm going to ignore the memory frequency. I'll come back to it in a second, I promise you. You can see that you can actually set pretty much everything. Um, as you can imagine, auto. I'm just going to scroll through things. And then you can kind of just get an idea of what you can do. I'm just going to leave all of these vol um, voltages and everything like that to auto. Because quite frankly, I've not played around with it at the moment. On the advanced uh, CPU configuration, TPM, device selection, uh, CPU configuration... There we go. I've got to click on it. It's a bit difficult because I'm not running things on my normal surface, so it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Automatic mode. Change the number of compute units in the system. Fear it. Fear it, I say. It's kind of nice, though. Wow, this is not the best of surfaces to be using this mouse, but unfortunately I'm on limited space, so, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, onboard devices. 
pretty much what you'd expect. It won't take much longer. I'm just doing this real quick APM configuration and USB configuration. Not that I've really got anything plugged in anyhow, but still uh, HD smart. Pretty much everything you would expect. And, you know, finally, I'll just click on network stack just because uh, we can also go to the monitor. And obviously, you've got everything in there. CPU temperatures, considering that I'm running this on way too much uh, voltage, most likely, most likely, excuse me, because I'm using auto. And that's about it. You can see that I've got all the fans pretty much plugged in. And they seem to be doing a pretty spiffy job. Um, and that's about it. So boots, you've got the various boot options and tools. So uh, the reason I wanted to bring you through the BIOS and eagle-eyed people will definitely have noticed, if you look at the memory speed, it's 2133. On the other hand, if I click on AI Tweaker, memory frequency here is listed as 2933. Now you might say to yourself, well, gee, Paul, why didn't you reboot? I have. That is rebooted. And... It seems to be an issue with the BIOS. Now, I have not installed Windows yet. However, I have done some Googling on this issue. Um, just because, you know, I just was kind of curious. And I was bored. And I was waiting for something to transfer. And basically, it seems to be an issue with this revision of the BIOS. Now, you might say to yourself, well, okay. It's not precisely a difficult thing to update the BIOS, right? Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to fix the issue for some people. It does for some, but others still have the memory um, clocks just basically stuck what they are. So there is another BIOS revision that's coming out very soon, which supposedly does fix this issue. So it's just a bit weird, and it does tell me that motherboard vendors certainly were kind of rushed, and this might also explain the shortages for the uh, motherboards. I did mention that they were an absolute bitch to get hold of. And I'm going to start letting you all have a look through a couple of photos that I took as well. It's certainly not the entire build set of photos and videos, but I figured I'll just let you have a couple of looks at the board and other bits and bobs. And that's about it for this video. I know it's a bit short, and I know it's not exactly super technical and in-depth, but quite frankly, I'm still doing a lot of research on this at the moment, and also I am incredibly busy. And I, I hate using that excuse. I freaking hate it because I feel like I'm shortchanging you all. And I, I don't like doing that. Unfortunately, uh, as I said, Amy is not here, which basically means that I am running backwards and forwards like an asshole. And that pretty much means that I have spent all day finishing the filming, uh, photography, built the entire PC. <laughs> Um, had to do the research on the BIOS issue that I just mentioned, um, and now I have had to do a few other bits and chores, like shopping and all that crap, you know, life, unfortunately. So, after that, I need to now, <coughs> uh, install Windows, and basically get ready, prepare myself for the onslaught. Well, maybe not the onslaught, that possibly is overselling things just a hair, just a smidge, just a jot, just an iota. But still, I need to prepare myself for many things. So hopefully tomorrow we can do that. If you have any ideas for benchmarking scenarios, do let me know. So far, I am going to be testing with a GTX 1080. So far, I have a feeling that the BIOS revisions and basically everything is so early that I might have to do testing a couple of times over, which is kind of okay with me. What I might do as well is, as a, as a couple of you mentioned, test it with like an RX 480 or something like that and see also what we can get out of it and just basically start buggering around with the CPU. That seems like a pretty good idea to me. Regardless, despite all of that, a couple of you have also asked me, do I regret buying Ryzen despite the hiccups? Um, no, actually. I'm actually quite happy to have bought it. I... Uh, as I said in another video, I own, well, a couple of videos, I own, like, a 6700K, although I don't technically anymore because I'm giving it to Amy, um, and I already own a 4770K, plus a few other systems as well, so it's like, you know, it's not a big deal, I already had a fairly decent-ish CPU, but I just decided, you know, I want to jump on Ryzen, I 
kind of had Intel for a long time, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's not like I'm sick of Intel. I just want to support AMD, and I want to see them do well, and I think it is going to be a great platform for me, especially because of the extra additional cores. That's going to be really handy. I'm probably going to update, uh, upgrade rather to another 16 gigabytes of RAM at some point in the not too distant future. But for now, I'm just kind of going to stick it with 16 gigabytes just to kind of see how things play out, and we can go from there. But yeah, I'm quite happy with it. We'll have to see. But, you know, let's just do some testing. With all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Sorry once again, it's been a bit bitsy over the past few days. But hopefully that shall resolve itself over the next, uh, well, couple of days. So that was a great sentence, wasn't it? Anywho, um, I'll see you all soon. And now I'm using the wrong mouse to try and stop the recording. So that's going well. I'll see you all soon. Take care, yourselves. Bye for now.